Which team will win the 2023 MLS Cup? Will FC Cincinnati take it home since they had the best campaign during the regular season? Will it be St. Louis that actually surprised many of us? Will LAFC be able to defend their title? Or will we see a surprise team come out of nowhere and win it all? Like Orlando City, they're totally going to win everything. Hi, I'm Nirhan Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manager TV and welcome to the MLS Cup bracket prediction the full bracket we're gonna do the entire bracket actually twice in this video with a special guest eli lesser from this week in mls we're gonna be doing his bracket in my bracket what could go wrong and what you can do to help the channel is drop a like and let us know in the comment section down below who will win the 2023 mls cup and why is it orlando city on top of that let me know who is the biggest mls hater you know tactical manager or Jurgen Klinsmann. Okay, that's enough. Let's play the intro and bring in Eli and let's just fill out this bracket. Okay, 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 everyone. We have Eli back here once again, and this is probably the most fun episode we've ever had. We have different opinions about MLS, but today we're not going to debate on MLS. We're going to debate on predictions of the MLS playoffs. What can go wrong, Eli? Everything. Absolutely everything. Because you know what? The beauty of MLS and the reason why people are so frustrated by it sometimes is that anyone could win any year when 60% of the teams make the playoffs. I personally love it. <laughs> I understand if you hate it, but I'm excited and... You know, it to me, it is the most wonderful time of the year. No one cares about the regular season. It's the season starts right now, honestly. I mean, we're going to go through the bracket. We're going to have my bracket and your bracket. And when you look at the bracket, actually, there are some teams that I and, and again, not trying to offend any fans here. There are some teams that are sort of mediocre that made it to the playoffs because more than half the league makes it. And then there's the top teams. And that's where upsets come in. But we're also going to talk about the format of the playoffs briefly because it changed, right? You have the wild card, which is just one knockout round match. And then you have the first the first round of the playoffs, which everyone can see round one, which is a best of three. So the best seeded team will play the first game at home. The second one will be away. And then if they need a third game, if none of the teams won both, there will be a third game hosted at the higher seed. I think there's one thing to add there before we start our bracket, Eli, is because they made a best of three, I think for the first round, it'll reduce the number of upsets. Yeah, I, I would say so as well. It will be interesting, though, because in those matches, there's no extra time. It goes straight to pens, and mm -hmm. that could be a difference maker as well. I mean, pens could be a crapshoot. Um, but yeah, I, I agree as well. I think that was the intent behind it i don't know why mls wants to limit the upsets because that's what makes the playoff special mm -hmm. um but you know i think they do want to give the higher seeds uh, a better shot here and that's what i think that is so maybe that will affect our bracket um maybe it won't maybe we'll still predict yeah. you know the eighth seed to win it all but who knows uh no no not yeah, that. Not, but, San Jose, <laughs> not the red no. bulls or um, you think but... espinosa is going to carry the san jose earthquakes all because that's like pretty much one of their it's not going to be jackson yule so no um, kate cowell's not scoring well so has one goal all season yeah he, he season. man is a woodwork merchant right now that's that's all i'll say like the amount of shots i've seen him hit off the woodwork it's 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 sad unfortunate um, so why don't we start with that why don't we start yeah. the two wild cards because those are the, the games that will happen this week already in the midweek, probably by the time some people are watching this, the wild card already happened and we got it wrong already. All right. Sporting Kansas City will face the San Jose Earthquakes. Uh, Sporting Kansas City will play at home. And MLS playing at home actually, well, in soccer in general, plays a big role. But in MLS, actually, statistically, playing at home has a massive impact in results and in predictions playing at home. Um, I also think that Sporting Kansas City is a bit better than the San Jose Earthquakes in general. I just think that maybe San Jose has the best player right now. Espinosa is probably the best player of this matchup. I don't know about you, but my pick's going to be Sporting Kansas City advancing, playing at home. What about uh, you? Me too, and I, I can't wait to see what that next round is going to be for SKC, uh, given who they're going to play. Um, but yeah, I back Sporting Kansas City 100%. You know, they're a team that's really had to fight their way up the table over the last few months. And I think that actually plays at their advantage. You know, they're they're in better form. San Jose was just barely holding on to that playoff spot. They started off pretty hot. 
Um, so, you know, form really matters in MLS playoffs. And yeah, I'm going to give it to SKC for sure. Yeah. Kansas City also, their defense has been mostly crap for most of the season. One of the worst in the league, I think. They, they allowed over 50 goals. But I'm going to go Sporting Kansas City. Advantage. I think probably what's playing a big role in my decision here, it's a match that's very even. These are two teams also that they end the season pretty much. I think they, they were tied in points or, or close to that. There was very close. Uh, I'm going to go with the home field advantage and I'm going to go Sporting Kansas City. It's probably going to be a very even match overall, like most matches in the playoffs are. So yeah. we agree on that one. Sporting Kansas City advance. But let's see this one here. This is a good one now. The New York yeah. Red Bulls. They made the playoffs again. Again. Uh, they, they, they made it play- somehow. 14 they have- years. Yeah, 14, 14 in a row. Great. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah, that's a that's a record in uh, American sports right now, actually. Hmm. Interesting. And and this was a season that they could have not made it. Uh, this is yeah. not the greatest New York Red Bulls. But... <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, but, but anyhow, and then you got Charlotte making their first playoff appearance. They didn't qualify last year on their first season. Uh, and now they've made it. And it was an emotional game against Inter Miami. Messi was playing. Uh, they've had one of the largest attendance or average attendances in the league, Charlotte FC, and they have made it. Now, here's the thing. I picked Sporting Kansas City a lot because of um, they were playing at home, and New York will be playing at home here. They were the eighth seed, and Charlotte was the ninth seed. But I don't know why. There's just something about this Charlotte team and when they played against Inter Miami that I think they're going to advance and knock out New York Red Bulls in the Red Bull Arena. You see, I could see that given I don't see Red Bull Arena as much of a home field advantage for the Red Bulls. It might be. Um, just given, you know, the, the 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 amount of fans that show up. However, you know, this is where we're going to disagree. And maybe I'm just playing it safe. Yes, yeah, Charlotte had an amazing performance in a way, in some regards, um, last night. But the Red Bulls are that scrappy team. They don't have a guy that should take them through a playoff match. But somehow they always find a way to get 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 the job done at least once. And... I think something about this scrappy roster um, where, where they literally have John Tolkien leading them. He scored the match winning mm-hmm. penalty and stoppage time to send them to the playoffs. You have your left back doing that. Um, just something about this team right now. And like I, I've said scrappy five times already, but they're, they're going to scrap one victory. And I think it will be here. Um, I, I don't there. There's, they have no chance against Cincinnati though. You know what's interesting about these teams? The New York Red Bulls won the last three games to make it, right? They won the last three games of the season. Which and Charlotte, in the last four games, they won three out of four and they tied one. So these are two teams that, at least in terms of form, they're coming in in good form for the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So you'll go with the Red Bulls, and I'll go with Charlotte. Uh, I don't so, think it will make a big difference, you know, with no. our bracket. But um, no. Yeah, because because now we're going to go to the bracket and then I have a separate tab that I'm going to be filling out your bracket. I'm going to mm-hmm. feel fill it out, filling it, <laughs> going to be <laughs> filling it out and I'll, I'll do the same with mine and we'll show it on screen after each round. So now we're going to go to round number one. Well, I mean, it's round number one, semifinals, conference final and then the cup. So round number one, let's start the first game right there. St. Louis, according to our bracket, this is both of us. They'll be playing Sporting Kansas City. And to me, I, I I could try to be a bit of a guy that just goes with the upset here. St. Louis has been too good, man. They've had a fantastic season, and their fans have been tremendous. I know I gave them a hard time with the whole soccer capital of the United States. and I did, too. Of, I did, too. Yes. <laughs> and they get pissed off about it. But but again, what they've been doing there is wonderful. I, and, and because of what we said when it started, it's a best of three. So that gives an advantage to the best team because the way I see it, and this is how it normally happens in soccer, if you're a worse team and you have to, and it's just one game, you don't know, it can have a lucky goal early in the game and that opponent has to deal with that in 90 minutes or, or a red card. You have three games and the goal differential doesn't carry. It's just, you know, it's just like a win. So even if, I don't know, they pull an upset in one match, I don't see them defeating st louis twice in three games so i'm picking st louis even if we pick san jose nothing changed for me st louis will advance to the semifinals yeah i mean both times that these two teams played in st louis st louis absolutely smacked them uh skc did win at home um but like i said best of three series just you know this is st louis's first ever playoff match i i can't see them losing in the first round um so i'm definitely going with st louis here 
Um, do I think they're going to win MLS Cup? Maybe not, but I I, I love this matchup specifically because this is just going to ignite that rivalry even more, that regional rivalry. Um, but yeah, St. Louis is going to take this one, in my opinion. Yeah, we know St. Louis can score goals. Their defense, I don't think it's that great. It's more of like the goalkeeper. Berkey's maybe had the best season out of all goalkeepers in Major League Soccer, or he's definitely up there. But they do leak goals. They do concede quite a bit, but they scored over 60 goals in the season. They're among one of the best offenses in the league. I think only Atlanta and the Columbus crew are ahead for obvious reasons. They have great forwards and great attacking midfielders. But even though Columbus crew, they lost Lucas Zilarayan, which that, that, that's... We'll, we'll talk about Columbus soon, the crew. Mm -hmm. uh, so sport, uh, so St. Louis for both of us, okay? Yeah. I'm going to put that. And I think the matchup of like Cincinnati and Charlotte, Cincinnati and Red Bulls, do we need to explain it? I'm going no. Cincinnati. Best I'm going Cincinnati. Yeah. I think Cincinnati is the obvious pick here. They have the season MVP, Lucho Acosta, 17 goals, 10 assists. He was brilliant. Uh, Brendan Vasquez, not a USMNT center forward, but a guy that's been in and out of the roster. Matt Miazga. Matt Miazga is there too. A, a very strong team from Cincinnati. Fantastic season. A team that when they got to the league, they sucked for what, three straight seasons? They were terrible. Yeah, wooden spoon three years straight, and then they've really turned it around. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I will say that could hold Cincy back, maybe not in this series, is there's a bit of drama happening with them and their DP Aaron Bupenza, but they are still able to win matches without him. Um, but that's something to maybe keep it. We don't even know what happened. He was disciplined by the club. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it's Cincy here. Come on they're They've been so great all year and they really, they really want to bring home this trophy for the city. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. So those were easy picks for us. Uh, maybe we'll see an upset, but as I said, best of three, I think that reduces the probability of upsets, but let me change the screen here and put at least I'll put one of our brackets, I think this one will be mine. I'll put mine up, and then we'll show yours once it's fully filled out as well. So we got St. Louis and Cincinnati advancing. The other matchup we have here, Eli, is Houston versus RSL. And this is what's interesting about this matchup. It's actually fairly balanced, in my opinion. It's fairly balanced with Houston maybe with a slight advantage because they'll play two games in Houston if needed. Um, I'm actually going to pass this hot potato to you. And who do you have advancing there? <laughs> So I am going with the Houston Dynamo. I'm trying to pull up their other scores from this year. Yeah, Houston slapped them the last time they played 3-0 on the road. That's important to mention as well. Uh, but the Houston Dynamo have been the biggest surprise of this season, even more so than St. Louis to me, um, just because this is a roster that should not be as good as they are. And Ben Olsen has been such a mediocre coach for so many years, and now all of a sudden he's cooking, and this team won a final against Messi's team. Like, that was crazy. Sure, sure, Messi didn't play. But Houston, the Houston Dynamo have been so fun to watch this year. They're chaotic as hell, which is what you love out of an MLS team. They have a roster of guys who are trying to prove themselves. Um, so this is this is a team I definitely see. And it sucks because RSL is also one of those teams I tend to root for because they, they, they're the biggest guys that always upset teams in the playoffs. They made it to the semifinals a couple years ago as a seven seed. The David um, Ochoa one. The David Ochoa one. Yeah. They when they made it when they advanced out of a round without having a single shot, um, taking a single shot, which was crazy against the or Seattle. The, the one against the Sounders. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. So the RSL is a team that like I feel like they'll always get through at least one, but I think this Houston Dynamo team wants it so badly. And what we've seen out of Hector Herrera this season has been amazing. He should be starting for El Tri. I don't know what they're doing over there. Um. But they're finished. Yeah, they're, they're finished, and it's just unfortunate because Hector Herrera is just so freaking good um, right now. And, yeah, I'm going with Houston here. It's very tough for me to say that because I, I'm kind of rooting for RSL, um, but I, I, I got to go with the Dynamo, and I think they have they have really good potential for these playoffs. Yeah, I'm going to also go with the Dynamo. Uh, the, both of these teams have, like, two of my favorite players. Not my favorite, but among my favorite players to watch. I really like Diego Luna. From RSL, mm -hmm. USMNT prospect, U20s. Okay. And Karaskida, actually, from the Dynamo, is my favorite mm -hmm. player in the Dynamo. It's not even Hec I'm not a big fan of Hector Ajeda. I know his quality. I agree in regards mm -hmm. to that. He's a great player. But Karaskida is my favorite player in the Dynamo. And I'm going to have the Dynamo advancing home field advantage. And I think their team might be slightly better. And, and you kind of mentioned it, they won the Open Cup. So there's some like playoff experience there this season that they've succeeded. They won it, the Open Cup. For whatever that's worth, they still won it. So we both go with 
the Dynamo here. Now this one, I'll go first on this one. Philly versus mm -hmm. the New England Revolution. Uh, to me, I know this is also a four seed versus a five seed, so technically it's close. But I actually don't think it's that close. I got Philly. I yeah, Philly I got Philly too. Yes, New England just beat Philadelphia at home. But the the just everything that this New England team has gone through this season, I just can't see them advancing against a solid, stably built Philadelphia Union side. Um, so yeah, Philly here for me as well. Yeah, I also think Philly, uh, they, they had a bit of a rougher regular season than we've seen in the past few seasons, but they still did fine. They still finished in fourth, 50, 55 points, only two points behind the Columbus crew. Uh, again, this is the team that last season probably could have won uh, the MLS Cup. They were this close if it wasn't for Gareth Bale. The season oh, before... Damn, they literally got knocked out by the New York City FC in the conference finals because half mm -hmm. their team had COVID, the starting 11. Otherwise, they, they probably would have been... Year. Yeah, they would have been in the cup two years in a row, probably would have won one. So I would not underestimate this team. I don't really think they're weaker by any means, despite the weaker campaign. Uh, so I got Philly advancing from New England. Actually, this is one of the matchups that, out of the balanced matchups, this is one I'm pretty confident in. And watch this age poorly. <laughs> Well, I mean, hey, I, I would never doubt Carla's heel. I still think he is, well, now behind Messi and Mukhtar, I think he's like the third best player in the league still. I think people underrate the heck out of him just watching him. With you have him over Almada? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, it, it's it's different. I, I, I won't say that. But, you know, I back Carla's heel as much as anyone. That's what I'll say. I, I think he's just so fun to watch. Um, But, yeah, I, I it's got to be Philly here. And I hate to say it because I love my Revs people, but I'm going Philly. Mm hmm. So now we're going to go back to the West. Let's go back to the West, to your this side, your side. And we're going to actually go to your city. LAFC, the current champions versus Vancouver, a team that I actually did not expect to make the playoffs. And I was even joking with you how I, I was following the season. And then when I was looking at the bracket, I was like, why is Vancouver here? Um, but they're here. They're here. They're here um, with Brian White playing up top. And they made it to the playoffs as a sixth seed. They made it directly to the playoffs. LAFC in Vancouver, who do you got? So this is tough. Obviously, LAFC is in my city, but they will never be my club. They will never be my club. But, you know, I, I as much as I want to crap on them, and, you know, Vancouver's technically had LAFC's number this year. They did win one and draw one. Um, and I love this Whitecaps team because they have a ton of heart. Their head coach embodies that fully, and they have – the most underrated star, as I told you before we recorded, in Ryan Gauld. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't think LAFC gets knocked out round one. I think it's going to happen a bit later, but I, I, I do got to go LAFC, unfortunately. And it, it, it pains me to say it, um, but I hope you pick the Whitecaps. Yeah, I think to me here, it's a pretty obvious pick too with LAFC. That's why I'm putting it here for you as well. Mm -hmm. I can't see them losing this one. I could, If it was a one match knockout round, I would say... You know, you got some players in form here. You never know. Things can happen. But I think when push comes to shove, they'll at least win the two games in L.A. And yeah. they'll advance. That's that's what I think. Um, so that's LAFC. Let's, let's actually finish the West, the West side yeah. of the bracket. Then you got Seattle and Dallas. And I can go first on this one. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you agree with me. This could be one of the upsets, which I think Dallas beating Seattle would be an upset. But I'm going for Seattle. This team last season uh, wasn't the Seattle we, we've we known because they focused on the CCL. They wanted to win the CCL, and that kind of ruined a bit of their MLS season, along with injuries. They had to deal with all of that. But never underestimate the Sounders when it comes to playoffs, besides that one year where they lost to a seven seed called RSL, which you mentioned. But Go their ahead. defense has been very good this season in MLS. Uh, they've, they've kind of struggled to score goals, to be fair. I don't think... I think they should probably be getting more goals than they got throughout the regular season. But I don't know, man. This Dallas team also, there were moments I didn't even think they were going to make the playoffs, this Dallas team. And um, I, I'm going to I'm gonna put Seattle advancing. This, this is one of those that I could see a major upset. But again, this best of three kind of kills the buzz of betting on upsets. But I'll give you the mic. What do you think? Yeah, no, it, it, I agree with you. Honestly, I think, unfortunately, I don't think either of these teams has a chance to get past LAFC because they're, they've are they been two very disappointing teams for me this year. I am going to go with Seattle's experience here. 
but I they they have no chance of making it past the next round. I think see this Seattle team is the worst second seed in MLS history that I've seen. Um, you know, we were just the whole year. You could tell the West was weak when the whole year we were just waiting for Seattle to continue to fall down the table, but no one else was rising because everyone was so mid. Um, it's it, it this is a really rough Seattle squad, and sure they had a massive result this past weekend, winning in St. Louis on the road. But I, I just don't think this team has has that anymore that they that, that they did a few years ago. Yeah, and if the MLS Cup wasn't one match knockout round, the the East probably would be the favorites. The the campaigns on the East side were far better than mm-hmm. the West. I mean, Seattle literally made it to the second seed, scoring forty one goals in thirty four matches. That's they would be enough. like the I, I don't have the standings in front of me right now, but they would be like the seventh seed in the West or in the East if they, they were. They would be six, six, six. Yeah, I mean, and I would take any of the teams above them, like no doubt. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'll, I also have Seattle advancing here. And, and then I think the next round, we're probably going to start to have some disagreements. Actually, now we're going to go back to the East to finish the f- round number one. And these two last matchups are actually, they can actually go either way. I'm not going to lie. Think so too. Yeah, even the Orlando-Nashville one. We're going to talk about that. These are teams I know a bit better. I watched a bit more of them, especially Orlando, of course. Columbus Crew and Atlanta. This is a fun one because these are the two best offenses in the league. Columbus had the most goals scored in the regular season. The second one was Atlanta. Then you got players like Cucho Hernandez there. You got Tiago Almada. So th- this is a fun matchup. And, and the defense, at least a, is Columbus Crew's defense bad? I don't remember right now. Atlanta had pretty bad defense the entire season. I'm going to pull up the standings just to, to have them for us. Yeah, I mean, they they were very middle of the pack, but Atlanta was very bad. Um, I'm, Do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Go ahead. Give me your pick of Columbus and Atlanta. Best individual player on the field will be Tiago Almada. However, I'm going with the Columbus crew. For me, they play the sexiest soccer in MLS. Most fun team to watch. Wilfred Nancy, what he's done for them has been incredible. And I was worried. That when Lucas Elorayan, they would lose their their steam. But Cuto Hernandez has picked it up. Diego Rossi's fit in pretty well. And adding a guy like Julian Gressel has been amazing for them. I'm going with Columbus here. And I, I, I'm sure you might pick Atlanta. But I back Columbus a lot harder than I might back up any other team in this bracket. Tiago Amada, Giacomakis. Did I pronounce that right? Giacomakis. Giacomakis. Yeah. Uh, silent. Silent, yeah. Yeah, that uh, Alexi Lalas gave him the MVP of the season. I disagree with that. Yeah, that, that, that I mean, like it's but, but good center for it. Good player. Great player. Great player. Amazing. I'm going to go with Atlanta advancing. I think Atlanta will win. Even though the crew, they'll have home field advantage and they play very good soccer, as you already pointed out. I wonder, I know you mentioned a few names that they added on and, and kind of like to make up for the loss of probably who was their best player, Lucas Larayan, that went to, to Saudi Arabia. He had, I think, double-digit goals when he left, like, mid-season, the guy. So uh, I'm going to go with Atlanta. You'll go with the crew. So this bracket on screen is yours, actually. So I'm going to put the crew. And for my bracket, which I'll show it in a second, I'm putting Atlanta. And then we have this matchup here, a two-seed versus a seven-seed, which you would normally say it's like, well, the two-seed are the clear favorites. But I'm going to say that the two seed are the slight favorites, not the clear, the slight favorites. You know, I'm a bit biased. I'm an Orlando City fan and I'm uh, you probably know my pick already. I'll explain it a bit more, but I want to hear yours. Uh, Orlando advances or this is the first big upset. It's funny because when you talk about you being an Orlando fan, sometimes I think of you as like, even though you are an Orlando fan, I feel like you, that would be a reason to not pick Orlando because I feel like you watch them and you're like, oh, we're so garbage. That's how you always talk to me about them. But no, um, I, I, I love the thing is with these two, these two fan bases outside of the galaxy have been the nicest to me all year. Um, When I visited them, I was welcomed with open arms into both. So I'm, I'm really drawing a line in the sand here and you know what? We've played it so safe so far on this bracket. I'm going to go to Nashville here because they have the experience. I mean, they made that final in the, the League's Cup. And yeah, they've kind of fallen off a bit of a cliff since then. But if they could find what they had then, they still have one of the best players in the league. Um, I, I just, ooh, it's tough because Orlando's defense has been really good as of late. But I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Nashville here. Screw it. Yeah, I think... 
let me try to put it this way. Nashville has the best defense in MLS, or at least mm -hmm. in the play. Yeah, in MLS. They have the best defense in MLS. They also have Honey Mukhtar up top, which is a player that, you know, give him time and space, one or two moments, boom, go, boom, assist. So that for knockout rounds is massive, right? You mm -hmm. have a strong back line. You can defend. It's tough to – they don't concede a lot of goals. And then you have a guy that can just decide a game for you. I don't think Orlando quite has that in the team. Well, we have some players that can be decisive. Facundo Torres, you got experienced players like Pereira. I know people are hyping Duncan Maguire. I'm not very high on him because of mainly because of the player profile. I don't think that's a technical player. I think he can work. He can work, but I'm not very high on Duncan Maguire. And I think he, he will be important for Orlando in the playoffs. That's for sure. I just don't like the fact that people are starting to push. It's like, oh, USMNT, we got to bring him. Like, Not yet. Not yet. Probably yeah. never, to be honest. Uh, I've watched. If we could a get bit. a move, you know, we we could see. But um, I, I it's funny because our striker pool. I mean, this isn't a USMNT thing, but it's getting better, you know, at least at the top of it. But uh, yeah, I, I the thing is, I, you know, I'm known as a Jesus Ferreira hater, right? Mm -hmm. You know that. Yeah. Um, I'm not even a Jesus Ferreira enthusiast. Um, but, but I would I would pick him over Duncan McGuire. That's what I'll say. Um, yeah, maybe right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. But they're the same age, I think. I yeah. think they're roughly the same age. Uh, but anyhow, that's Doesn't that's matter, the right? advantage for Nashville. Strong defense, star player up top. Honey Mukhtar is better than all the Orlando City players. I'll put it that mm -hmm. way. Uh, and they're deep. But Orlando City has a better team. And and when you look at some of the people, like Junior Russo came back too for Orlando, mm -hmm. just just to cite a name. But the Orlando defense is good enough. We've got Pedro Galezzi on goal. Strong midfield up top. Maguire is getting the job done. You got Facundo Torres. It's a good. They team. lack. They lack playoff experience though as a unit. Um, and you know, in the MLS playoffs, for me, it takes. It really star power really matters in the playoffs more than it does in the regular season. And it really takes that game changer. And for me, you know, Nashville has that. Orlando doesn't have that one guy that's going to do it quite yet. You know, Facundo Torres has been decent. For most of the season, he had his stretches of poor runs, but I don't think he's ready for like that big playoff match. And I hope he proves me wrong so he could go to Arsenal or whatever next year. But um, that's that's where I, how I, I see it. I don't think he's Arsenal quality uh, in my. That, opinion. That's just been the rumor for like. Yeah, yeah, I saw the rumor too. I don't think he's Arsenal quality. Good player could probably play for a lot of teams in top five leagues, but not not like Champions League teams in, in my opinion. I've watched a lot of Facundo Torres and Arsenal. Watched a lot of Arsenal mm -hmm. too. But again, just my opinion on that. I, I think Orlando and Nashville is going to be one of those rounds that'll be it'll be scrappy. I think the games will be scrappy. It'll be tough. I think there'll be low scoring games because Pareja ball in knockout rounds, it's it's very scrappy. Pareja ball and Nashville cool. doesn't concede. What what's up? I just remembered this is really a really fun fact. Um, in both matches this year, uh, the away team won, which could work in Nashville's favor in this series since they'll be the away team for the first and third <laughs> match, but it both matches were 2 0 well, and the away team won. So maybe that might convince you that Nashville will win it. Um, but Hey, I'm going to use that as my advantage here. Nah, man, I'm putting Nashville on this one. Cause this is your bracket. Now in my <laughs> bracket, I put Orlando city and Fair I'm enough. not going to pull up my bracket yet. I can just pull it at the end. Let's keep your bracket on screen for the sake of it. Also, most of our picks are the same besides Orlando so far. Well, actually, in Atlanta. I picked Atlanta and Orlando to face each other. You picked the crew in Nashville. So let's do this. Let's go back to the West. St. Yes. Louis versus the Houston Dynamo. Now, Eli, we're going to one-leg knockout rounds. That's where upsets can happen more frequently than the best of three. St. Louis and Houston. Look, uh, I don't know, man. This is what I, I think Houston advances. As same, crazy as this same. you do okay. And I, the results of this season wouldn't suggest that, but because St. Louis did have the upper hand on them, but this Houston team's not going down without a fight. And I don't think St. Louis is going to win in their first year. I just I don't see that happening. And I think the Houston Dynamo are a great contender to take them out, and that's why I'm going with Houston. Um, so I'm glad we agree on that. But that's a good upset. Yeah. That's a safe upset too, because I think a lot yeah. of people think that. But I'm going with that. Yeah, also there's that thing with Houston, the experience. So you talk about a few players like Hector Ejeda. He's been around the block. He's been around a few here and there. So, And they they just won the Open Cup, so they figured out how to play knockout rounds. There's that, I know it's not MLS Cup, but it's still knockout rounds. There's the experience mm -hmm. there. They figured it out. I'm going with Houston, too. And that, that that's probably – I think that's the first big upset that we've selected. This is much bigger than Nashville in Orlando. I don't think Nashville and Orlando is an upset, actually, despite the seeding. Mm -hmm. I think it's very balanced. 
So Houston, now Cincinnati and Philly. That's another one that I think could lean towards Philly. There could be an upset there with Philly. But do you want to go first on this one or do you want me to go? I'll let you go first on this one. But I, I think I know where I'm going here. I'm going with Cincinnati. Playing at home, yeah. I still think they're the best team in the league. They're a strong candidate to win the MLS Cup. They have players that can decide. I know I decide a match in one or two moments. I understand that Philly, this is not going to be an easy game. I'll tell you that uh, with Philadelphia Union. But I'm going with Cincinnati. I, I could go the route of an upset here, but I, I think Cincinnati will advance to the next round. What about you? It's funny. I forgot what exactly happened in their last match, but I remember it was chaos. I think there was like red cards flying everywhere. I'm, I'm looking it up. Yeah, there were red cards 2-2. Two, two. You know, there are two teams that I think could take down Cincinnati in the East. One of them is the Philadelphia Union, given that, you know, their their head coach and their GM just came from the Philadelphia Union a couple seasons ago. And that could work in both ways where maybe they could take down Philly because of that. Um, I am still going to pick Cincy here because I don't think this Philly team is as strong as we've seen the last two years. They still have the playoff experience. They have the experience to get to an MLS Cup final um, or, you know, make it very far in this run or in the playoffs. But I, they've been very unsteady this entire year, and it's hard to go against a team like Cincinnati at this stage of the playoffs. Yeah, I also think when you look at these two teams, just the campaign aside, um, Cincinnati has been the best team of the season. It, it's going to be very hard for us to pick it, pick against them. I already knocked out the team that I think would knock out Cincinnati. It would be Nashville because of their defense. I think they're like in one leg knockout rounds. Nashville will be a pain for anyone to deal with. Uh, you know how defense plays a role in knockout rounds much more yeah. than the regular season. And that's mainly why. But yeah, we both agree so far, the upset and, you know, the regular one. LAFC in Seattle. The game will be played in Los Angeles if it actually happens, of course, considering both advance. Who do you got? <sighs> it's got to be LAFC. I don't LAFC. trust the Seattle team. Also, they always dog... They always dog Seattle in the playoffs. They always beat them. I, I don't see LAFC losing here, unfortunately. And they, by the way, neither of these teams are as good as their past or more recent teams have been. I don't think this LAFC team compares to last year's team. And I don't think this Seattle team compares to their like 20, you know, 2019 team. Um, but I, I still feel like LAFC has to edge out. Seattle here. I, I hope the people watching don't think I'm like an LAFC fan now, but I, I do have them advancing here. Yeah, the games during the season between LAFC and Seattle were fairly close. It was like a 0-0 draw and a 1-0 LAFC win, which means the teams are probably far closer than you can imagine. Then we can talk about... The, the thing for me here is, again, I don't know why, but it's just from watching so many knockout rounds and different competitions... Defense plays such a massive role when it comes to these games. And I watching Palmeiras in South America, how they won two Libertadores, mainly on their defense, relying on their defense, and how they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chelsea just because of their defense. Seattle is among the best defenses in the league alongside Nashville, at least in goals conceded. I think Nashville's defense is better, but Seattle only conceded 32 goals. Now, they, they really struggle to score. They're not as deadly as you would want a team to be to actually fight for the cup. But I'm going to go with an upset here. And I know... It seems like I'm trying too hard because I put two upsets on the West, but it can happen. And I think this is the end of the road for LAFC. I think Seattle will pull pull through here and knock out LAFC. And this will be a big upset, just like Houston and St. Louis. So for me, Seattle. It's funny. They're my two least favorite teams, so I want both of them to lose. Um, but unfortunately, I'm going to back LAFC in this one. Um, but I, I actually don't care who wins. I, I hope they both lose. So I, I hope they find a way to get themselves kicked out. Um, but yeah. <laughs> You sound like um, Argentina fans back in the 2002 World Cup. I was in Brazil, and then Argentina's newspaper, Brazil was facing England in the quarterfinals, and they were just like, um, they can both F themselves. I'm trying not to curse here in the video. You, you guys yeah, understand. Me right. too, but <laughs> that's how I feel. Uh, those are the two clubs I would love to see lose as soon as possible. Pretty much rooting for anyone against those two. Sorry, Seattle fans, LAFC fans. You already know I hate you, um, so I don't really care. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I, that's where I stand on that. But yeah, I, I do have LAFC winning. Um, I actually don't think the winner of this match really affects the bracket very much. Um, but yeah. Okay. Let's go to the East. And then you, you picked, this is the one we have different matchups, so we can't even really debate our picks because you have different teams. You pick Columbus to face Nashville. Who advances and why? 
hot take. I'm picking Columbus here. I, I think, you know, the team split the series this year personally, um, or not personally, but they, they did split the series. And I, when I tell you that I'm backing this Columbus team to the end, I, I actually am in this video and Nashville has, you know, barely made it into the playoffs after a fantastic start after an amazing, you know, uh, di sorry, the, the door just, uh, opened. Um, so I, I'd lost my train of thought. Um, but Nashville were barely chugging along at the end of the season, lucky to make the playoffs at the end of the day, where Columbus consistently at top for a couple of the last few months of the season, Cincy and Columbus were my one and two in my power rankings. So that's how high I've, I've viewed Columbus. So I'm going to back them and I'm going to have them, you know, have a hell is real Derby in the, the Eastern conference final. Okay. Cincinnati versus the Columbus crew and then Houston versus LAFC. For me, I have Atlanta facing Orlando City. Uh, like another I rivalry, a rivalry. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, it, sometimes to me, it doesn't feel much like a rivalry. It felt a bit forced. I feel like Inter Miami and Orlando eventually will be the rivalry here, especially in Florida or mm -hmm. not Florida here, more like the southeast here. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Orlando and Atlanta. Here's the thing. Uh, it, it goes back to what I said before. Orlando's a better team than Atlanta, especially this season. Uh, far mm -hmm. more consistent, I would say. But Atlanta has the best player and the best center forward yeah, the best attackers. And, and then my only concern, not concern. I want Atlanta to just, they can go screw themselves. I hope they lose. But the only concern I would have if I'm an Atlanta fan is the defense of this team. Now I gave them a pass against the crew because that's also a team not known for their defense, right? It's more for their attacking soccer. I think Orlando city will knock out Atlanta and I'm, I'm trying not to be as biased as possible here. I'm trying to ignore the fact that I want Orlando City to make a deep run. But I think overall, with all the issues that Orlando City has had and all the issues I have with Pareja Ball, I think very often he is a soccer terrorist. I think Orlando City is bound to finally make a decent run here, look good, go to the conference finals, and then they'll play Cincinnati. So I have Orlando City advancing. People are going to call me biased, but... We're human beings and we're all biased. And a lot of our picks have biases here. There's no All I'm saying that. is y'all are lucky the Galaxy ain't in the playoffs. <laughs> y'all are lucky. <laughs> we are lucky? That's, yeah, that's a bias. No, because then I probably would have picked them to win it all. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> just but just so everyone can see, this is my bracket. This is my bracket because I'm switching with yours now for a little bit. Very mm -hmm. similar to yours. I guess like if you look at the bottom right corner, that's where we had mainly different opinions. But for the most part, these are our brackets. But let's go through this one here. I'll, I'm going to leave mine on screen a little bit, and I'll pick mine, and then I'll put it back on yours again. Houston and Seattle. That's a tricky one right there. That's a tricky one because these are two teams a lot of people don't expect. But I'm going to go quick with this one. I think, once again, defense is going to play a big role, and I think Seattle just has that playoff like pedigree, if, if that makes any sense, in MLS Cup. Uh, I mean, that's Seattle fair. So I'm going with Seattle making it to the MLS Cup final. And then Cincinnati and Orlando, I think that's the end of the road for Orlando. And I know a bit obvious of a pick, right? We're picking we're picking Cincinnati, the team that was the best team in the regular season to make it. Well, guess what? That happened to LAFC last season. They were the best team in the regular season, and they won the MLS Cup. It's not every single playoff, like MLS Cup playoffs, that – the top team is going to get knocked out in the first round or get knocked out early, like we saw with the Revs a few years ago. Or even, wasn't that it Philly so before much. that, right after COVID also? It was yeah. Philly. So that's I mean, there usually is time. a supporter shield curse because actually before LAFC, the, they were the first team to win MLS Cup that and also win the supporter shield since 2017 Toronto, which is, in my opinion, the best team in MLS history. But mm -hmm. um, that, yeah, that it is a curse. And... But I think the way your bracket is set up, I would also have Cincy winning it all mm -hmm. in, in that. I think Philadelphia has higher odds of knocking out Cincinnati than Orlando. Orlando would try to make it mm -hmm. scrappy. We're also going to be playing away if we face Cincinnati at that round. I don't see us knocking out Cincinnati or Orlando, just being honest. Uh, unless we get lucky with an early goal, maybe a red card, something like that. But if the game goes as expected... I, I don't see my Orlando City defeating Cincinnati. And then we're going to pull up your bracket so you can get your MLS Cup match, the last one. And you have Cincinnati and the crew, Houston and LAFC. Take the mic and let me know the winners of each one. 
All right. So first of all, let's get let's get the levas out of the way, the traders. And I am absolutely picking the Houston Dynamo here. They have absolutely dogged LAFC this season, winning 4-1, beat them 1-0. Uh, they, they, I mean, no, 4-0. They haven't conceded to LAFC at all this season. I'm I'm going with them. They upset the crap out of them last year, too. So I'm I'm doing it. I'm I'm putting the Houston Dude, Dynamo through past LAFC. Isn't it crazy if you go back early in the year, the Dynamo making the MLS Cup? It would have been crazy. Would not have believed you. I didn't even have them in my preseason predictions making the playoffs. But that's just the beauty of this league. And that's why all of you out there should watch the Major League Soccer. Or or don't. We don't stand for prop. I'm joking. I mean, I yeah, I, no, I, I mean, hey, hey, I, I wanted it. to put out a, a you know a disclaimer that I'm not paid by MLS, despite <laughs> what many of you viewers out there will believe. Um, for all I know, they don't even like me. So that's that is what it is. But you if know, they don't like you. Imagine what they think of me. <laughs> <laughs> but because I used Dynamo, the, baby. The thing is, I I watch the league a lot. It's just that I'm very critical. So there's people on Twitter that get this sense like this guy hates MLS. Like. Guys, I'm very like if I hate an MLS, I would just ignore its existence, like I do to a lot of leagues or different things. I, I watch it. I'm very critical because I I don't like a lot of the things they do. I'm I'm very against a lot of the things they do, but I'm here. I'm watching it and I'm covering hey, it too. I'm gonna say I bet even Greg Beerholder out there has a little soft spot for MLS too. That's all I'm saying. But dude, no. he watches a lot of MLS actually. That's what I mean. Because he, he watches it more than any other league. That's all he I'm does. Saying. Like Twitter threads of mistakes from Zimmerman, Miles. He's watching the whole game, dude. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Beerholder, I'm I'm a lover, not a fighter. We could be friends. You know, I I ain't got no beefs out there. No beefs. <laughs> No, also he'll be happy because you knocked out LAFC. He does not want to see Aaron Long lifting a trophy. So oh, oh, dude, same, bro. I'm I'm in on that. So you know, we're, I'm with you, brother. I don't want to call you brother, actually, but I'm with you. <laughs> um, Cincinnati and the crew. I'm gonna tell you right now, Columbus is winning this one. Oh my I, goodness! I I feel like this is where Cincy's run ends. Yes, your stress on defense is valid. But the last time these two played, Columbus had probably their best performance of the season, winning 3-0. I was there earlier in the year where they barely lost to Cincy 3-2. I, I think Columbus has the upper hand, and this is just going to make that rivalry even better. You know, if Columbus comes in and ruins Cincy's best season ever, oh my God. And these fans already constantly go at it. I I, I want to see a Columbus crew win here. I'm going and, for the Columbus crew. And the final for your for your MLS Cup would be in Columbus. Yes. And I want to go back to, I will be at MLS Cup wherever it is. So I want to go back to Columbus. So let's let's do this. Okay. Okay. And then, and then before we go back to my bracket with this final and the crew playing at home, and, and I mean, they've won MLS Cup sort of recently. Mm -hmm. Um, was it MLS Cup or MLS is back? Am I going? No, MLS uh, is back. Twenty twenty. MLS Cup. Yeah. They won MLS, MLS Cup. Cup. MLS. Yeah. MLS is back. Was Portland? Orlando was there, obviously, and then they they won right after COVID. It was the crew that won it, and that was even before Aiden Morris got his torn ACL. So he's got an opportunity to win the second um, MLS mm -hmm. Cup right there. Aiden Morris, Cucho Hernandez up top, one of the best center forwards in the league that should probably be in Europe very soon. We and haven't even like, mentioned Darlington Nagby, bro. Oh he yeah, is Nagby. still he is still him. We haven't mentioned him this entire time. I'm just looking at their their team sheet right now. Like this team really has it. They have the experience. They have a ton of guys. Cucho Hernandez is like the best striker, like goal scorer, assister combo at the at the nine position in the league right now. Um, I I love this Columbus Crew team. Will for Nancy is probably the best head coach in MLS right now, low key. I, I'm back in the Columbus crew, and it's so funny. All these fun and flashy MLS expansion teams over the next or over the past few years. But I have two of the oldest teams in MLS in my MLS Cup final, and I have an MLS OG, the Columbus crew, getting their third star. I'm going with Columbus to win it all. And Wilfred Nancy was have them in their first round. Leaving and Wilfred Nancy was in charge of Montreal last season, right? That knocked out a Orlando. team that aggressively overperformed. That's how good of a coach Wilfred Nancy is. That team should not have been near the playoffs, and they were a top team in the East. That's Wilfred mm -hmm. Nancy. Annie inherited Lucas Elrayon and Cucho lost Lucas Elrayon, but still able to be like just as good, if not better. I believe this Columbus crew team actually has like the chance to win it all. And I think they, if Philly doesn't have the best chance to take out Cincy, Columbus definitely does. So I'm going with them. And I'll be honest, I don't see any team in the West winning MLS Cup. 
no matter who I put to win the East was going to win MLS Cup for me. So I'm going with the crew. So Eli has the Columbus crew winning the MLS Cup. As for me, when they get knocked out in the first round, I can't wait for your tweet about it. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm I'm saving this dude. Like you got to understand, I'm I'm doing this video so I can blackmail you after. It's yeah, like, dude, of course. I'm gonna put this. <laughs> no, no but, it's also don't... that football report account could could retweet your hate towards me, but he thinks it's like legit hate, not even banter. <laughs> he it, a lot of people would think it's legit hate. The, the thing yeah. is, uh, yeah, the, Twitter, it's Twitter or Sorry. X, whatever. Yeah. My final is Seattle and Cincinnati. And, you know, the Seattle fan base gives me a hard time. Not Cheyenne, but a lot of them do. They give me a hard time because, you know, I don't like Rodon in the national team. I don't like Jordan Morris in the national team. But in Major League Soccer, I think those are good players. Uh, maybe not at their best anymore, possibly. But I don't know. I, this is a tricky one because it goes back something similar to this last year's final. Mm -hmm. LAFC were the favorites coming into the final against the Philadelphia Union. But the game could have gone either way. And we saw that. They needed a Gareth Bale to the rescue in extra time to get LAFC the win. Yeah. And LAFC were the better team. They were the favorites. But again, um, this is a, a final and anything can happen. <sighs> if they make it this far, I'm going to say the match will probably be 1-1, something like that. And it'll go to penalty shootouts. And Seattle will win the MLS Cup. Oh damn! Yeah, I, I thought you were going to say Jordan Morris skyrockets the penalty to lose. Or no, something he like will. That. He'll skyrocket the penalty, and they'll still win despite Jordan Morris. And Roldan misses. Damn, bro, you're a hater. No I'm kidding. Yeah, I, <laughs> I have. I have the Seattle Sounders winning with Roldan and Morris missing a penalty, but they still win on penalty shootouts against Cincinnati. And this is our bracket. So what I'm going to do is let me put. Like I already put the bracket. People already saw it by now. I don't have to put it up again. I can just remove it here and put us back. So Columbus winning the MLS Cup, Seattle winning the MLS Cup. The one it's thing a we 2020 did... rematch. Yeah. <laughs> Our champions. Again. They, they, yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. It'll be a fun one. So we'll see how many we get right or wrong. I mean, we're gonna get something right. I'm assuming something. I don't know so. about that. I've had some pretty bad brackets in the past. So. <laughs> so you're over. saying you're saying no one should bet on what you picked. Don't do no it. No one should bet on MLS in general. I think that is a dumb idea. Um, but you know, if you're a real sicko, then go ahead. But I would never put any dollar on an MLS playoff because literally anything could happen. Yeah. If you want to be a degenerate, be a degenerate. So <laughs> just do hey, it. You said it, not me. You said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, everyone. I'm joking. Do whatever you guys wish, or you know, just fill out a bracket for fun and let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let us know your picks. Maybe don't do a full bracket on the comment section, but maybe just let us know who do you have winning the MLS Cup. And please do it before we're in like the conference final. Like pick it early because it's easy to pick when you're like in pretty much the final. Do it like we did. Go it right right away. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Go follow Eli Lesser there at This Week in MLS on Instagram, Twitter, and well, the YouTube channel is not very active, but TikTok. Anyhow. TikTok, you can do TikTok. TikTok. Same handle, the one right below. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Same handle. But yeah, YouTube, don't worry about it. I'm just a viewer of Tactical Manager. That's the only reason why I have YouTube. Why, like, why else would you have YouTube? You know, just, uh, just, you know, subscribe to Tactical Manager. Yeah, on YouTube. What else can you watch on YouTube? Well, There's I watch some... highlights. I watch every league's highlights, but yeah, you know, it's Tactical Manager. Why else would you that exist is that without is Tactical Manager? Duh. Yeah, um, the but... number one hater of MLS, if you guys made it this far in the video. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Drop a like before you go. Have a great day. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.